Hey there, YouTube. Welcome back. This is the Allegheny Northern in N scale. And today I'm here to tell you that, well, for the last couple of years that I've been doing videos, I've been lying to you. And now I don't feel guilty about it. What do I mean? Stick around, I'll tell you exactly what I mean. Okay, so here's the great lie of the layout. And that lie is that everything runs perfectly and it's just about watching trains go by. And to be honest with you, nothing could be further from the truth. And as you watch these scale cars, uh, scale trains cars run around here, uh, I can tell you that a lot of what I'm about to uh, reveal to you is as a result of these cars. Now, as you all know, um, I picked up a few of these back in August when I went to the N scale uh, meet in Altoona. Absolutely love them. And then picked up a few more. So now there's a train of nine of these little guys running around. Now, I don't have any real purpose for having auto racks uh, anywhere on the layout. I don't have any auto-served industries. Uh, they are just really cool cars, and I wanted to run them. So uh, I added them, and of course, they're long 89-foot uh, cars. And they opened up a whole world of problems that I did not know I had. So for most of you who've been following the channel, you know that you've seen uh, the same couple of trains running around all the time, like this guy right here. And for the most part, there's never an issue. They pretty much run in the background of my videos, and you don't really you know, pay much attention to them as they roll on by. Well, and uh, for the most part, eh, that's pretty much true. But you'll notice that all of these cars are standard length cars and nothing real exciting with them. Um, but when I switch it up and I change my cars and I start running different cars, various problems start arising that well, I hadn't noticed before. Um, so certain cars derail, certain locomotives derail, certain things just don't work right. And you guys never see them in the video. And that's the lie. Most of us here on YouTube, um, we only show you the, the trains that are running and working correctly. In fact, if something goes wrong, we typically cut the camera change the angle and uh, put the train back on the track and reshoot it. That is part of the lie that I want to reveal to you guys today because I think it gives you a false uh, impression that these layouts all work perfectly and there's never an issue. Okay, so we are looking at one of the scenes that uh, was original to the layout and this is now my fifth layout. And to be honest with you, uh, layout number five is large parts of layout number four sort of reshuffled and relocated. So what happened originally this layout was upstairs uh, on the first floor. I have a little addition on the house and it was in that floor. Liked it a lot because it was right off the living room. Um, it was easy to get to and I was basically on the main floor of my house. So uh, easy access to kitchen, TV, all that sort of stuff. Well, I came downstairs. Um, and had a completely unfinished basement. Um, and that seemed to make a lot more sense for a model railroad as most of you have your layouts in your basement or in a spare room anyway. So um, realizing that I could use that first floor for entertainment purposes, um, I took my layout apart and brought it downstairs. Okay, when that happened, some things expanded and we get layout number five. In that last segment, you realize that the camera stopped and the train stopped and now you'll see that I have a pull apart, right? There's my box car back there and there's the rest of the train right there. Now, why am I showing you this? I know that these two box cars have an issue. They have had an issue. There is a coupler um, misalignment on them and they just, well, they just don't work. Um, so it happens a lot um, and it's just a matter of replacing the couplers and we're back to good operating condition. But just to show you, it's part of the lie. You don't see that on a typical video. And for those of you with the astute eye, you probably realize that uh, in the last shot, um, our scale trains auto racks went by and uh, there was two out of nine. Uh, we had a simple derailment in the S-curve and that resulted in the rest of the train getting left behind. So. Uh, it happens, and uh, it, it's kind of rare that they both happened at the same time, but yeah, there we are, and it goes to prove my 
point. Now, there's nothing wrong with the scale trains, cars, and quite frankly, um, if anything, it has to do with the fact that there's a little bit of snow material um, that's caught between the tracks, and I'm actually working on that now. Um, but I know that there's a little bit of an issue right there past the bridge, and the cars like to jump the tracks. So I need to clean them um, up a little bit just to clear those rail flanges a little bit better, and then that will solve the issue. It doesn't happen all the time, but it does happen occasionally. And so that brings me to point number one. And point number one is if it happens sometimes, then there's a problem. So I know a lot of us will sort of let little errors in our layouts go because, well, it runs most of the time. Well, if it doesn't run all the time, then it doesn't run and you need to get in there and you need to fix it. So uh, our box cars here that I know are a problem, um, they need to get fixed. And I've been putting it off mainly because, well, I just don't want to go back to the workbench and work on it um, because it's, it's kind of a pain in the butt. So how do I basically stay up to date with everything? So when I say up to date with everything, what do I mean? Well, just like the real railroads, our models require maintenance. Couplers go bad, wheels come out of gauge. Um, you will get just, you know, maybe not enough weight in the cars. Locomotives need cleaned and greased. And you just need to keep up on that stuff for good, reliable uh, operation uh, to your railroad. Now, I keep microtrains 33 and 36 inch uh, wheel sets, which I try not to throw on the floor, but sometimes I do. Um, and then I keep some body mount couplers of various sizes so that they are ready to go. Then I keep some roller bearing trucks. Those have the couplers on them. And then I have some that are just the trucks themselves. And that's just to replace body mount um, cars. So I keep all of these things back here because sooner or later I'm going to have a set of box cars or something that is going to need new couplers. And when that time comes, I've already got the parts and pieces. So I don't really have to take them out of circulation. Just have to come them back to the workshop and actually feel like playing maintenance on couplers and wheel sets. Okay, back onto the layout now, and we've got our uh, mixed freight here uh, powered back up, and it didn't make it very far. I think I may have knocked a car off the track when we were, uh, yep, that's exactly what I did. When I was trying to reconnect them, I popped them right off the, right off the rails. So, uh, and now I've got them spanning two different tracks. Not real prototypical, probably don't want to do that. Uh, but anyway, um, so this is this is kind of sort of what I'm going to say is a uh, has been a typical operating session as of late because I know there's some things that need uh, need done here. Uh, this one was not the car's fault or the track's fault. This was my fault because I knocked the car off the track when I was trying to put the train back together. So, um, but anyway, so let's let's talk about um, some of the things that I uncovered with these scale train cars. Well. Because I was running standard um, length cars, um, these cars all ran very, very well. I'd had no issue with any of these cars, um, you know, until the coupler issues. Um, but basically, the trains ran just fine, no issues, and they could run forwards, backwards. It didn't really matter. Change the motive power it didn't really matter. Um, but the scale trains, all of a sudden, uh, 89 foot cars. They got those real s small profile wheel sets, metal wheel sets. I hate them. I'm not a fan of them. Um, but unfortunately, with those particular cars, not a whole lot you can do about it because the microtrains, at least the ones that I have, do not fit in the car. Um, yes, I tried. But um, I was getting pull aparts um, in multiple areas. Uh, here was one. Uh, right there was one. And right here was another one. And so what I realized is, although my other trains were not having any issues, none of the locomotives were having any issues, because I had these cars that were quite a bit longer, they were much more susceptible to the grading changes that were happening here. Uh, and look, you'll see that that car pulled apart, so I think my coupler's gotten worse. But, um, so what I had to do was go back and regrade, um, basically reprofile those tracks. Um, and I'm taking it backwards here because I'm going back to my throttle, which I left in the, uh, in the other side of the room and I'm going to take it with me. But, um, so I had to re 
reprofile those tracks um, basically as a you know something the standard railroad would do um, but it's a little more painful in end scale because you gotta pull up your scenery and make some adjustments so um, let's go back I'll take a take you over there to that side of the layout and show you once again here um, now that my trains in two pieces I've got the scenery all patched back in and quite frankly you can't tell that I really did anything uh, it did not take long um, and it was not a huge uh, problem, but one thing that uh, that I did uncover that was not related to the uh, the elevation changes um, was that uh, somehow in this corner, I don't know if something had dried and shifted, but the track had actually kinked, and though you couldn't see it, um, the the track had kinked um, between the rails. So I basically was out of gauge when I came around this curve, and that was causing certain locomotives and certain cars to, to pop the track right here. Um, so uh, I found that just by watching the trains go over it, watching them derail. Um, that was a pretty consistent derail. Um, and like this area where they pulled apart, that was a pretty consistent pull apart. Um, so I knew it had to be done. There was just a matter of getting there and doing it and then patching the scenery back in. Okay, not a big deal. It, it, it's easily fixed. But what about when you have that one piece that does it sometimes but doesn't do it all the time? It's only on certain cars, and it only seems at the most inopportune moment. How do you solve that one? Okay, so uh, that boxcar pull apart finally got to me, uh, and I figured if I'm ever going to get this video done, uh, I got to get those cars fixed. So I took them off the layout, back to the workbench with the intention of replacing the couplers, um, but I didn't um, because they actually both checked in in height, um, which tells me. Uh, something else might be going on with them, and I kind of want to run them around a little bit more to see what that something might be. Now, I did notice when they're coupled together, there seems to be a height difference. So, anyway, I still have those cars uh, sort of bad work ordered, um, but there wasn't anything that really needed replaced on them. So, I bent the coupler into place a little bit because I saw that it, it looked like on the shank it had been riding just a little bit high. Um, so, it looked like it had gotten pulled out of place, which happens. Um, and it's probably, if your coupler is going to have an issue, that's probably going to be the number one issue that you're going to have. So let me bring the train here into a spot where you can see it. Um, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop them so you can see how these couplers are lining up. Okay, so uh, if you look there, you can see that uh, that one is sitting just a little bit high. Um, and that is why they're pulling apart. Um, so I did... Like I said, I did kind of bend it back into place just a little bit, um, and it's showing, um, you know, like I said, you can see that it's sitting just a little bit, a little bit high there, um, and I think it's just been, you know, it's been in service for a while, and there's been a lot of uh, pushing and pulling on it, and I think it just got uh, pulled out of place, but uh, right now it seems to be running fine, so we're going to let it go around a few times and see what happens. Um, it's definitely still marked to get replaced. Um, there's, there's, there's an issue with it, but... For now, uh, we're going to let it run. So that brings me to the next point, um, and that is, okay, it's working, and it's working for now. Um, if I was doing an open house or was having guests over, um, I would have just replaced it. Uh, I know that these couplers are expensive, and so are the, the wheel sets, so I try not to replace them until they're absolutely necessary. But if I was doing an operating session um, or had guests over, I would not want the chance that this thing is going to pull apart and I would not trust a temporary fix such as bending the coupler back into place um, as going to be the fix-all. And the reason for that is because that is indeed temporary um, and it is a good indication that there's probably a, a stress uh, problem in that shank so it's probably going to bend out of place again. Um, it's just going to need to get replaced. That was sort of a temporary fix. Okay, so um, if something works but it only works part of the time the motto is that that doesn't work. It needs to work all of the time. Um, and it should work in all of the conditions. So that means no matter what order in the train you put it, no matter which locomotive you put it to, and no matter which direction it's running, your cars should always stay on the track and stay coupled. If they don't, you have an issue that needs to be resolved. Um, and you're going to want to get that resolved. Um, if you have just a car that's always a problem, say an 89-foot uh, car that's derailing all the time or it's coming off the uh, uncoupled uh, then your problem is probably with the car um, and it could be the car's length it could be um, the turning radius for the car 
Um, or it could be an actual mechanical issue with the car. But if you can isolate it to a single spot in a single type of car, uh, you're gonna be better off. So the first thing you wanna do, limit your options as to what you might have to repair. Second, check your track configuration. So many of you recall there was a real sharp S curve in here and now you'll notice that it's gone. Um, that was the major uh, start for the beginning of the month of February and you'll catch all that in the update. But um, all of my trains went through it just fine except anything that was an 89 foot car um, or, or um, uh, had the, the proto uh, scale wheels would not ride over that S-curve. And what was happening was, is basically, you'd have one part of the car that was still in the curve and one part that was getting into, ready into the next part, uh, the next embankment, and there wasn't enough transition between the two. And so it was making it very, very easy for the trains to pop off the track. Um, and once again, this was a stopping point for the scale trains, which is why you never saw my scale trains run through this part of the layout in the videos, because, well, they wouldn't run through. And now as you watched, here they are, they went right through. So, um, the next thing you wanna check is if you're having issues with your layout, check and make sure that your track alignment is good. Um, if you're having issues with your trains coming undone, um, real good chance that it's an alignment issue. Okay, and by the time we get to the layout update for February, you're not even going to know that I did anything here. So since we're in the moment of full disclosure, I will tell you that this was another area um, that had to get realigned for these 89-foot cars. And um, what happened was, is once again, I had the track. Uh, although it looked like it was level, it was sitting kind of cockeyed just a little bit on the roadbed. Part of it had popped up. Um, and it was just enough to force those scale those true scale wheels or whatever they are um, on the scale trains to come right off the track. Um, so it required just a little bit of shimming to bring it back up. You can see where all the ballast has, has changed there and, and, and the scenery needs patched back in. Uh, that'll be today's task later. Um, so you, you'll never see that again. But um, in the course of doing that, I corrected the grade, um, made it a little bit less uh, steep back here uh, on the uh, siding which was great for trains um, that need to take the siding instead of staying on the main line. They seem to run a lot better. Um, plus, it corrected some issues uh, going up this grade where I was having, once again, the scale trains come disconnected. So, um, two major projects, three major projects when you think about it, here uh, on the far side in the winter and then over at the S-curve that got all realigned, basically so I could run 89-foot cars. Now, um, that means these cars... Um, which I love these container cars. I know they're a little bit out of date um, and the uh, trailer on flat cars, um, but I couldn't run them either. And the reason I couldn't run them was the same reason the scale trains didn't work was because they could not get through the S-curve. Um, and now that, that S-curve, both S-curves that were on the layout are gone, um, I can put these into revenue service on the layout and start getting them running. So, you know, pretty excited about that, to be honest with you. Okay, so... Um, now that I don't have to, to lie to you on how the layout runs anymore, uh, and I can tell you, you know, this is basically um, now foolproof. Um, so we've watched this train. He's, he's made a couple of loops, so that temporary fix on those boxcars seems to be holding for now. So I'll let that ride as long as I can before I have to go and get them fixed. Um, but uh, a couple of takeaways. One, check your track alignment. Make sure that your track is good. Especially if you got a particular area where you're always having derailments, there's probably something going on with the track. Two, if it doesn't work all the time, it doesn't work. So look at what you've got going on there. Make your corrections, um, whether it's to your cars or to your track. But you should be able to hook up any of your locomotives to any of your cars going in any direction on your layout. And you should not have an issue. If you do, you need to take a look at that. Okay, so three, after you've checked your track alignment and you've checked to make sure that your cars are, are in working order, um, you got a bad order the ones that don't. So if you've got an issue um, where something isn't working correctly, you got to know to pull it off the layout and get it, get it looked at. Um, otherwise, it's going to continue to cause you frustrations. Um, and you can see we just had to pull apart. So uh, rather than continue to have those frustrations, we just need to get those uh, replaced. So um, that's kind of sort of where we are here um, with the, uh, the state of the layout, we'll call it. 
Um, and so I did not want you guys to think that this was always um, a perfectly running layout. It's, it's not. Um, none of the problems that come up are something that can't be fixed. Um, you know, so we're just going to take this uh, boxcar right there. We're going to take him off the layout because I think he's the problem. We're going to go get him fixed up, get him back to running. Um, but just so you guys know, this layout was built by a human. It runs like a human built it. There are issues. So when you see all those videos uh, on YouTube from all these people that are having, you know, their layouts just run perfectly, I understand that you are getting the best video uh, segments that they have. Um, and they probably have derailments and they probably have track cleaning issues just like you do, just like I do. Um, it's the way it goes. Um, but I will tell you that once you get those issues solved, um, you can start enjoying your trains a lot more, especially if you really like those 89 foot um, scale trains. Auto racks and the like, if you have an issue with a certain car, just get it fixed. It will, it will save you. Um, and I'm going to tell you to fix it correctly. Um, you know, you saw what happened when we just sort of bent the uh, coupler back into place. It lasted for a little while, and then before you know it, it was right back to its old antics. So we're just going to go ahead. We're going to get that fixed, and you will have a lot better time modeling. So hope this was helpful and somewhat inspiring to you. So if you're having issues with your layout, don't get discouraged. You just need to spend some time, take a look and see what's going on, um, and you will be able to enjoy your layout. Um, just as much as now I get to.